hollow casting resin with a foam backing. In this tutorial, we're going to explain the basic process of slosh casting a resin shell and then backing it with a rigid foam core. Now this technique is typically employed for two different reasons. One, to make a lower cost part than a solid resin cast, and also because sometimes if you're casting just straight rigid foam by itself, expanding foam doesn't always get the same detail as a resin cast. So this uh, allows you to get the benefits of both techniques, of both a resin surface and then a lightweight economical foam core. Now to begin, we'll be casting into a Platsil gel tin silicone mold. Now gel tin, of course, being a platinum silicone, does not require any mold release, and we don't want to use any mold release in this because any release residue would later need to be decreased from the part, and we want to avoid that if at all possible. So what we're going to do instead is dust the inside of the mold with baby powder or cornstarch, and then brush that into the detail of the mold, and then blow out any excess with an air hose. Now what this does, if you watched our previous video on painting techniques, you saw us uh, do this on a smaller piece, basically what this process does is it allows a thin layer of that talc to transfer to the cast part and give us a more matte surface that's much easier to paint. So really important technique, especially when you're using really soft silicone molds that might uh, otherwise transfer a little bit of oil from that silicone to the surface of your cast part. Now this next part is where uh, this is definitely much more of an art form than a hard science. When you're rotationally casting, there is a little bit of guesswork involved in making the first part. And that's one of the main things I wanted to explain in this video is uh, how to figure out some of those amounts and then how to uh, adjust that as you go into production on a particular part. So for this, we wanted to only mix up a minimal amount of resin. Here I'm mixing up 100 grams of part A and 100 grams of part B. Art cast resin is mixed one-to-one uh, -one by weight. So a very easy ratio, but we don't want to mix too much. We don't want to have any waste because all we need is that thin membrane of resin coating the inside surface of the mold. So I usually like to start with about uh, a quarter of the volume of the mold or less. And uh, you can always adjust that later on. This is where it's real important to take notes and even write those notes, write some of those amounts that you wind up with for production on the outside of the mold. So anyone doing production with that particular mold can look at the outside of that mold and see exactly what it takes. Say the uh, resin surface takes 200 grams and then the foam backing requires 400 grams or something to that effect. So real important to keep track of that because again, when you go into production on a part, you want to keep track of those things so you can have uniform, consistent parts. Now we've also added a little bit of brown polycolor. And the reason for that is later on I'm going to faux finish this cast piece to look like uh, aged copper or bronze. So I want a, a brown a backing to that. So if for any reason later on this piece was to get scuffed or scratched, we would see brown resin and not bright white plastic. Now this particular resin formula has about a three minute working time, so we have plenty of time to get that accurately mixed and then poured into our mold and carefully sloshed around the inside. And one of the nice things about this resin formula versus some of the lower viscosity resins is we don't want anything too low viscosity because when you're slosh casting a part like this, if it's really low viscosity, like say Easy Flow 60, it's going to have a tendency to just sink to the lowest point and uh, not form any kind of membrane around on the surface of the mold. So real important there, you need a resin that's going to cling to the surface of the mold a little bit, and typically the higher viscosity resins do that better than the lower viscosity resins. And uh, resins like Easy Flow 120 or TC800 are also both really good selections for this. Now you'll notice I'm using that stir stick to just scrape off the flange and make that level. And it's important to do that before the resin completely cures. You'll notice it's starting to kick a little bit there. If we wait too long and start scraping, we might start pulling up that resin skin. So you want to do that step really quick before that completely cures. And like we've shown in other videos, that's going to cure from the thickest points and radiate out. 
So once that started that color change, you're ready to move on to the foam casting. Now, just as a, an added little precaution here, when we pour our foam, we don't want that expanding out the back. In this particular case, I don't necessarily need it to, to be flush with the back of the part, but I do want to make sure that if the foam rises a lot, that it stays within the mold. So what I'm doing here is waxing a piece of plastic that I'm going to lay on the back of the mold. And uh, this is a nice big piece of uh, thick Lexan, but you could also do this with a piece of uh, melamine coated plywood or a project board or anything like that. Uh, anything that's sturdy enough to withstand the pressure of the foam, as you'll see here in a minute. Now this is our six pound rigid casting foam. This is just a cheap general purpose hard casting foam that cures to a six pound density which is actually kind of a medium density for rigid foam and uh, this particular foam is going to expand around nine to ten times the original volume. So for our first part like we have here uh, some of this is going to be some guesswork. There's no way uh, if you've never cast into that mold before without some really complicated uh, geometry geometry to figure out what exactly the volume of that is. Some of this you just need to mix up a small batch and see where that winds up filling up the mold. Now an important side note about materials like this that are mixed one to one. It's really important to remember, and this is going to sound really stupid, but it's really important to remember that uh, materials that are mixed one to one are not sum to sum. It does need to be as accurate as possible. A lot of people see that to one to one mix ratio for the first time and think that they can be a little bit sloppy, but remember that the more accurate you are, the better your results will be, especially when you're doing parts in production. If you're sloppy, you will have inconsistent parts. So always a good idea to be as accurate as possible. Even though there is a little bit of a margin of error, I would not rely on it, especially when you're working in small batches. Now what I'm doing here is just using a cheap throwaway brush to spread that foam around as it expands. Uh, with uh, the rigid casting foam expands a little bit slower than some of our other foam systems so you do have a little bit of time there to get that spread out across a mold especially a more complicated part like this with a lot of surface detail. And now I'm just going to put that plastic board on the back and a weight on the back of that. And again I put a minimal amount of foam here so I'm not really concerned about it filling up completely or trying to overflow but uh, if it does bump up against the top I want it to form a flat back and uh, not a big mushroom part that I have to saw off and clean up later on. Now this particular foam sets in about uh, 30 to 45 minutes and by this point the resin should definitely be set. So I usually demold a part like this within about 45 minutes to an hour. You're typically ready to demold this part. And you'll find that if your foam has bumped up against that, uh, that plastic board a little bit, because of that wax, you should easily be able to release that and uh, separate that from that uh, plastic board. You'll notice that we filled up the mold just shy of the top. And if on our next one we want to adjust that so it comes all the way up to the top, this is where those notes I mentioned earlier come into play. We can always go back to those original notes and say we mixed up a four ounce batch for our foam. We could raise that up to maybe a uh, five ounce batch, two and a half ounces of A, two and a half ounces of B. So real important to keep track of what you're putting into the mold so that you can adjust that and get your ratios perfect. Because the other thing we want to keep track of is on that resin surface, if that resin is too thick, we can back off of that because that's wasted money if we have too thick of a resin skin on the surface. Now quick cleanup and our part is ready for painting. We're just going to go around the edge and remove some of that flashing and for that we're just going to use a wood rasp. You'll find a little tool like this that you can find at most hardware stores is a great way to clean up resin flashing on parts like this. We're just trying to take off uh, thick resin flashing and take it back down. Anything finer than that we can do with a Dremel tool or some sandpaper. And there we have our cast part and it's nice and strong and ready for faux finishing. And there you have the basic process of casting a hollow resin part with a foam core. And just so you can follow the process a little better, I'm going to put up on the upper right hand side, I put a link to the video where we made the mold that we're using in this video. So be sure to check that out. A link for that will pop up on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. We produce a lot of content relative to resin casting and mold making. So be sure to uh, click the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you get notified when we create new content. And of course, all 
all the materials that we show in our videos are available on our website at brickintheyard.com.